Hey, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about the ASA classification system used by anesthesiologists. Now, what is the ASA system? It's a universal system used by the anesthesiologist to grade a patient for preoperative comorbid conditions. Now, one important note is it's not based on the operation. Not based on operation. Patient could be uh, undergoing a triple A or they could be going a hernia repair. Their ASA classification is not gonna be based on the degree of difficulty or severity of the operation. It is going to be based on the patient's status prior to surgery. So what it is, is it should not be used for predictive risk of operation. So let's say a patient with an ASA of three, you're not gonna say, ooh, we're, uh, we're not gonna enjoy this surgery. No, it's not really to base on the surgery outcome. It's to base it on the patient's pre-morbid conditions going into surgery. It is a universal measure. So an anesthesiologist in California uh, can communicate a patient's status with a doctor in New York. Uh, just by saying their ASA level, they know that, oh, this patient has pre-morbid conditions and they rank uh, on a scale of, let's say, an ASA 2. So you'll kind of have a good idea of what the patient's preoperative uh, condition or state is prior to surgery. So let's go through. What is the ASA classification system? Now, there's going to be six different classifications, ASA 1 through 6. We'll start with ASA 1. In this case, we're going to see a normal, healthy patient. Simple. Patient doesn't have any comorbid conditions. They've got no medical issues that are being treated. Usually when you think of younger patients, so let's say a 17-year-old male who uh, has severe right lower quadrant abdominal pain, their appendix probably um, has either ruptured or they have appendicitis. They have no medical issues that they're being treated for. They're on no medications. They don't smoke. They're healthy. They would get probably an ASA of one. Now, what is an ASA of two? It's where you have mild systemic disease. Mild systemic disease, usually involving only one body system. So let's, uh, let's use an example of thyroid disease. They could e either have hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. Um, as long as it's well managed with medication being followed, they're not symptomatic, you know, that would be an ASA of two. So let's just say thyroid disease, mild and controlled. Now, what else can we throw into the ASA2? Well, if the patient smokes, uh, they would be considered an ASA of two. If they're pregnant, as long as they're not in preeclampsia or health syndrome, um, as long as it's just a normal pregnancy, you would give the patient an ASA of two. Let's say you have high blood pressure, or hypertension. Uh, as long as it's reasonably well controlled with a diuretic or a beta blocker, as long as their systolic and diastolic aren't through the roof and they're not experiencing end organ damage, you'd give them an ASA of two. Um, severe obesity, that would increase as well. So those are some examples for ASA of two. This is not comprehensive by any means. However, if they're overall healthy, but they may have a few underlying diseases going on that are well controlled, that would be an ASA 2. An ASA of 3, we're moving up the ladder a little bit. This is where you have severe systemic disease. Usually affecting multiple body systems. Remember the ASA of 2 is just one body system normally. An ASA of 3, we're going to be dealing with multiple systems. So what are some examples? Well, liver and kidney disease. Now, your kidney is a pretty important organ. It's going to deal with blood pressure. It's going to deal with your urine output. It's going to secrete hormones. A lot of different things deal with the kidney. So if you have uh, overall kidney and liver disease that's affecting multiple body systems, that would be probably an ASA of three. Let's say COPD. It's more of a severe systemic disease. Now, there's a difference between uncontrolled COPD, where you're experiencing mild symptoms, 
um, shortness of breath maybe uh, but not severe shortness of breath if they're at rest with no exercise and they're really huffing and puffing they're cyanotic they're turning blue they're probably not an ASA of three they're probably an ASA of four so the COPD let's say mild COPD um, also coronary artery disease it's more of a severe systemic issue that we're going to be dealing with but as long as they're not currently having a heart attack if they're uh, in no angina state if they just have coronary artery disease we would give them an ASA of three and then let's also throw in uh, congestive heart failure as long as it's mild then uh, then we would classify that an ASA of three moving up even further looking at an ASA of four it's where we have the severe systemic disease affecting multiple organs that is going to be a constant threat to life if they have a disease that's affecting multiple body systems that is a constant threat to their survival to their life so what am I talking about remember I said COPD but this time it's going to be severe COPD heart failure if they're symptomatic at rest if they're really struggling to uh, regulate their body to regulate their heart function as long as it's severe CHF we'd probably give them an ASA of four let's uh, throw in severe uncontrolled diabetes their uh, hemoglobin a1c level is uh, going to be let's say 12 they have end organ damage to their heart to their kidneys to their eyes they have uh, they have a severe constant threat to their life so I would say an ASA of four as long as you see that end organ damage and let's um, just kind of for completeness sake renal disease up here I threw in liver and kidney ASA of three as long as it's mild but now we're talking about severe renal disease um, metabolic acidosis the whole works we'd probably give an ASA of four ASA of five this is a patient with severe systemic disease that's not gonna live not gonna live 24 hours or more without surgery so this, these are the patients that, you know, only have hours to live unless if they have an emergent operation, in which case that operation is going to contribute to their overall survival. So uh, aortic aneurysm. Um, symptomatic sepsis. Oops, I can't spell today. symptomatic sepsis we're talking about those diseases that you know are a little more involved we're not talking about thyroid issues we're not talking about diabetes we're talking about severe diseases where unless if they have emergent surgery they're gonna die so sepsis um, aortic aneurysm their blood pressure is going to be 60 over 40 I mean these patients are gonna be sick and then lastly our last classification system these are gonna be donor bodies these are patients that are going to be brain dead whose organs are being removed for donor purposes their organs are going to be harvested for transplant purposes so typically don't see the ASA of six unless if you're at a hospital that deals with a lot of transplant patients um, however most of your patients are going to be ASA of one through three typically um, the more severely uh, sick patients are going to be the ASA of four and the ASA of five. So in summary, I kind of threw together um, just in one slide here, everything that I just talked about, it's easier to see kind of everything on a scale all at once. And then also down here, I want to talk quickly about an ASA of, let's say ASA 3E. What is an ASA 3E? Well, if you see that E thrown onto the end of a classification, it means that the surgery was an emergency surgery. So there's a situation, for example, you have a healthy 17 year old male comes to the operating room to reduce a fractured femur. That would be classified as one E. Remember I said that you have a 17 year old, he's healthy, he has no comorbid conditions, but he does need to have an emergency surgery uh, to reduce that 
fractured femur. So it'll be a 1E classification on his ASA. Any of these can have the E. Um, so the example that I gave was an ASA 1E, but it really could be anybody um, here. So if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Otherwise, thank you for watching my video. I have references here. Here's the uh, stuff that I used to make this video. Otherwise, it was my own knowledge and hope you enjoyed. Thanks.